We have all been brainstorming how to like bring the world of Windows 11 or Windows 10, whichever it is, to the M1 chips or M2 chips on Apple Silicon as a whole. So I came up with two solutions for you guys, my viewers. That's Parallels and Crossover in the past, yeah. The links are in my description, but today we are here to make the two fight against each other. Fight to the death. Yeah, because that's what I love, violence. So, basically, we're going to compare parallels and crossover on the Apple M series or Apple Silicon chips or whatever they call themselves on the MacBook. So, like, we're talking about which is better depending on the kind of stuff you do and which you think of investing your money, buying it, or subscribing to, and all that BS, BS, blah, 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 blah. blah. <laughs> So like when we talk about crossover and parallels, they are both VMs. Yeah, they have a common VM is a virtual machine that lets you run Windows and x86 stuff virtually on your MacBook M1 or M Silicon, Apple Silicon, whatever. So now the difference between parallels and crossover, that's like the obvious difference, is that one has a GUI and one doesn't. Parallels has an entire Windows environment for you to work on, like it's so robust. It has every single system app, command prompt, almost everything. It's like an it's like an actual Windows, like because you have to install a Windows ISO to even get the parallels running. Yeah, the ISO of the Windows for ARM. Yeah, there's an ARM version of Windows, and it's very cool. Yeah, while crossover on the other hand, crossover is like you have to create a bot tool and you have to put the setup as exe of the app you're trying to run and let crossover do the rest so crossover just goes straight to the app while parallels runs the app through whatever windows has to provide windows for arm say precise now when do you use parallels and when do you use windows in short there's something called directx directx is like the api that graphical apps used to communicate with the software the windows software yeah that's why we are playing a game they always say direct x or dx d3 something like that you see, you see stuff like that direct x diagnostics and all that yeah so like that's just what parallels doesn't have yeah because parallels runs without direct x why because it's running straight on your M m1 silicon yeah so like you can't really have direct x on that because it's a whole lot of virtualization. Why crossover on the other hand has direct X? Yeah, it's compatible with direct X. So like when you want to play a game like GTA in this case, that's when you use crossover. Why when you want to just work on notes, Microsoft Office, or let's say you want to use some Visual Studio or something productivity as a whole, that's when you use parallels. Yeah. Parallels is more robust, it's more flexible, it allows flexibility, it allows you to do a whole bunch of stuff why crossover is more powerful it's more power hungry it's more bloody it's more war hungry it's more violent yeah. it's meant for gaming and gamers if you want to play games on your m1 max m2 max m1 pro m2 pro crossover is what you use yeah if you want to install crossover products by the way just check the links in my description i have several videos on them yeah because they are very amazing apps. There is one called UTM4, but it's still in the beta. When it comes out, I'll be sure to make a video about it and fill you guys in. Yeah. So that's, that's it actually about Parallel and Crossover. Yeah. Crossover doesn't have Windows desktop environments. Parallels has one. Parallels doesn't have DirectX or DirectX support. Crossover has that. Yeah. That's basically it about them. So thank you for watching this differentiation video the parallels over the crossover with respect to windows yeah see what i did there don't forget to subscribe to my channel created by hardy if you have one sound see you guys in the next video created by hardy out that's the word